So in the last lesson, I talked about preparing your geometry for clot simulation. And so you can see uh, in this file here, I have all my animation geometry, simulation geometry, collision geometry, and render geometry for the clothing. And they're all set up with wrap deformers so that the simulation geometry follows the animation geometry and the cloth render geometry follows the simulation geometry. So for details on that, refer to the previous lesson. Now I'm going to select my simulation geometry and in the effects module go to end cloth, create end cloth in a local space output and the end cloth node that's created right away I'll rename it so that I know that it goes with uh, this particular simulation geometry and I'll create an end cloth object for my second simulation geometry and rename that also so I can keep track. Now to create the collision object, I'll select it and go to end cloth, create passive collider, connect it to the same nucleus solver and make collide. And it created an end rigid object. So I'm going to rename that by adding the name of the collision geometry to that. So now I'll take these new nodes and create a group by selecting them and uh, clicking Control G. And then I'll move that node just to keep things organized under my cloth sim group. So let's look at the nucleus for a moment. This is the actual cloth solver. And so it has parameters like gravity and wind. And you'll see solver attributes like substeps. So how many times should uh, per frame kind of should the cloth solver um, calculate collisions. So you can increase the accuracy. Usually I'll start with like 12 and 16 and increase it if, if needed. This will make it take longer, but be more accurate. And so for scale attributes, I'll change the space scale to 0 0.01 because by default, the nucleus solver uh, treats one unit as one meter, but Maya treats one unit as one centimeter. And so just to keep it accurate, because it does have an effect on how your clot simulates, I put it to 0 0.01. So now I'll go to the cloth object and I'll just add presets. So I'll click on like in the attribute editor presets, choose a t-shirt and replace all selected so that those t-shirt uh, preset settings go to both objects and I'll change a few of these default settings. So the first thing I'll change right off the bat is just the thickness. Usually the thickness value I'll start at 0 0.1. So for how thick it's going to simulate the geometry to be. The reason I lower this value is because if it's too thick, it'll create issues, slower simulations, more errors. I'll change the damping to 0.1 and keep kind of the drag and damp values like either 0 0.05 or 0 0.1. So I keep them low to start with. And so I'll change the thickness of the other object as well. And also for my rigid object, the collision body, I'll change the thickness to 0 0.1. So this just makes it easier for the solver to solve this cloth, to simulate this cloth. So I'll just hit play. And you'll see that the shirt exploded and it didn't collide with the body. So I'm showing you this as a common kind of problem. Like you can have geometry problems that you don't see until you get in here. And so what I did is I merged the vertices on that and recreated the cloth setup and then brought it back in. And now you see that it's stretching too much because I changed the uh, scale to 0 0.01. So then I need to change a few other parameters too. And for the cloth, I'm going to change the stretch resistance. So I'll bring that up because this clothing is supposed to be kind of like cotton. I don't really want it to stretch so much. So stretch resistance and compression resistance I set to 200 on both of these end cloth objects. And I can change the self collision flag to be more accurate. So vertex will be faster, but vertex face 
We'll calculate collisions on faces instead of just the individual vertices or points. And so if you find that you need a more accurate result because things are going through each other, you can adjust thickness, you can adjust your substeps in the nucleus, you can adjust um, the self-collision flag or the collision flag to be more accurate. But I would say only increase these things if you really need it. Try it with lower settings because it'll be faster and give you less problems. Only if you really need that accuracy. So now I'm turning off by unchecking the enable button, the shirt, and hiding it. So it can just simulate the pants. Now you'll notice that the pants kind of fall down because there's nothing holding it in place. So I'm going to select the edges around the top by double clicking on those edges. And then I'll do select, convert selection to vertices. So now I have all those vertices selected. And then I'm going to control click the body collision object and create an end constraint, point to surface. So that will keep these vertices kind of tied to the collision body as if he's wearing a belt or something. And I'll rename the, the uh, dynamic constraint object so that I know what it is. And so now if I hit play, you'll see that his pants don't fall down, which is pretty nice. So now I can display his shirt again. And if I check enable, then they can both simulate at the same time. So during testing, I'm just hitting play, but when you're doing an actual cache, go to end cache, create end cache with the objects you want to simulate selected. And so if it's one object, then just do one. I'll usually do one file instead of doing one file per frame. And if you're doing multiple objects, select them, and then you can check one file per object. And then you can adjust you know, how detailed you want it to be, every frame or 0.5, meaning every half frame interval. And then I'll just cache it out that way. So I hit play if I'm just doing like a quick test to see like, oh, are the pants staying up? Like I'm just testing my basic settings very quickly. But if I bring, after bringing in animation and stuff, then I'll do like create end caches every time. Another thing I can do is I can hide the simulation geometry and show the cloth render geometry and simulate with that on if I want to, if I want to see the end result while I'm simulating. It'll still simulate the sim objects, but display the cloth render objects instead. So you can definitely do that. Now here I noticed that the shirt, the render shirt is not moving with the simulation because the wrap uh, is messed up. So I just deleted the history on it and recreated the wrap. So I'm just showing you some of these problems that are very common that you'll run across uh, while you're creating setups. Now you can see that the render shirt moves with the simulation. So now I'll show you a few more options in cloth properties. So as I said, you know, you can start the collisions on like face and vertex and then increase it if you need more accuracy. Start the thickness low, increase it if you find things are going through each other. And so there are a lot of different attributes. I'm just going over the basics to get you started. You can refer to the Maya documentation to kind of see the exact definition for each of these attributes. And they're very powerful, very useful. And you'll find that you need to change uh, different attributes to control the way that a simulation looks or sometimes just to prevent a simulation from kind of exploding for vertices to jit to stop vertices from jittering or shooting off and things that you may find in complex simulations. But that's part of why I keep things low, uh, make it simple 
for the simulation first, and then increase things, increase your uh, kind of properties, the fidelity of your simulation as needed. So I'll show you one other thing, like input mesh attract allows you to kind of let the effect of the animation, the underlying animation of your uh, skinned clothing to be mixed in with the simulation. So zero means that it's full simulation. Uh, one means it's using the animation fully with simulation on top. And damping and drag I usually keep at 0.1 or 0 0.05. And when, if you're going to increase it, just increase it very small increments at a time, like add 0.1 or decrease 0.05. Another thing you can do is you can select your simulation geometry, right uh, click on it, paint, and cloth vertex maps. And you can paint all these different attributes. Uh, one that I'll show you right now is uh, how you can paint the collide strength. But this way, you can vary the value of these parameters over uh, different parts of your simulation object. So let's say I'm painting the collide strength. I'm going to set my value to 0 and increase the radius of my brush and start painting. I'll change the type of brush to get kind of more solid color without that fall off. And I'm just painting this black so that its collision strength is zero on the sleeve. Just to show you kind of what this can do. So if I hit play again, you'll notice that that sleeve doesn't collide anymore. It doesn't collide with the body. And so that's one way to kind of turn off collisions in some parts. And this can be useful if you're having like, like trouble in certain areas. I mean, this is very simple geometry, so it, it can simulate just fine. I'm just going to flood this back with the value of 1 so that it does collide. But you can paint a lot of different parameters this way. You can you know, make clothing stiffer. You know, like the collar could be stiffer, the cuffs could be stiffer by painting different values. Another thing I'll show you is a really cool thing that you can do with um, the Nucleus Solver. So let's say, like for my job, I do a lot of simulations on like superheroes, very fast moving characters. So I'm going to create a locator. Sometimes uh, that causes problems when characters move too fast. So I'll select a face on the lower back of the collision body. Select Control, kind of select the locator, and then create a constraint a point on poly constraint, uncheck maintain offset and check all axes. And now that locator is going to move with that polygon. So I'll change the name of the locator. We'll call it speed locator. And this is just to keep things organized. You don't have to rename it. And I'll select the locator, then the nucleus and create another constraint. This time I'll create a point constraint. And for its settings, I'll make sure that maintain offset is unchecked and constraint axes is set to all. And it created a point constraint on this nucleus. So now the nucleus, you can see the little n, is going to travel with that locator. And I can adjust the speed locator weight on here. So 1 means it's traveling with the speed locator 100%. 0, the nucleus is not traveling with the locator. And so what that does is it's basically killing that translation motion's effect on the simulation. So if it's 0, then we're getting the full effect of the translation of the character's body through space. And if it's 1, we're getting rid of all the motion and so for animation, I'll select these animation geometry objects and do a, an import cache. So cache, import geocache. And when I'm done simulating, I'll take the cloth render objects and I'll click on cache, geometry cache, export cache. And again, just like with simulations, I'll do one file and one file per geometry. 
And that is the cache that is going to allow me to bring in my simulation results into my lighting file. So I hope that makes sense. I'm just kind of going over it quickly just to kind of give you the information without wasting too much of your time. But feel free to ask any questions. This is a basic overview of setting up a character for cloth simulation. All the parameters and different types of constraints and things have their place. They are useful in different situations. I've just tried to not to overwhelm you with this lesson by giving you the basic tools that you need for most situations. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, subscribe if you'd like to receive more lessons. There are different types of fields and things in here, so I encourage you to look up these in the Maya documentation to get a better idea of how you can make use of them in your simulations. Thank you.